Education Association, New Delhi, organizing the webinar for drawing attention on the importance of social justice for inclusive development. We start the program with a prayer. Now I would like to invite Dr. Nyan Saranya for the prayer song. Krishna Krishna Mukunda Janatana Krishna Govinda Narayana Hare Krishna Krishna Mukunda Janatana Krishna Govinda Narayana Hare Achudananta Govinda Madhava Sachidananta Narayana Hare Achudananta Govinda Madhava Sachidananta Narayana Hare Krishna Krishna Mukunda Janatana Krishna Govinda Narayana Hare Om Shanti 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 The Department of Lifelong Learning and Extension, Gandhigram Rural Institute, have been periodically conducting the webinars on various themes and subjects since 2021. Through these webinars, we could reach thousands of learners across the country and also offshore. In this connection, the today's program is focusing on social justice. As Mother Teresa's quotings, small things done with great love will change the world. May I request Professor L. Raja, President, Indian Adult Education Association, and Professor and Head, Department of Lifelong Learning and Extension, Gandhi Gram Roller Institute, to welcome the August gatherings. Good afternoon to all of you. Am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Yeah. It gives me an immense pleasure today that the Department of Lifelong Learning, Center for Women's Studies, Gandhi Gram Road Institute, and Indian Adult Education Association, New Delhi. These three organizations and three uh, wings we are having this program on World Day of Social Justice 2023. For this program, many of our own distinguished scholars and all join today. So my duty is to welcome all the dignities and the participants. So this line, I am very happy to welcome Dr. Revered Vice Chancellor Gurmit Singh, Vice Chancellor, Additional Charge, Gandhi Gram Rural Institute. I also welcome Dr. VPR Sivakumar, the Registrar, respected sir, and because of the Vice Chancellor and Registrar's approval, uh, this event is taking place. So we are grateful to you and we are also happy and I'm delighted to welcome and we are all very happy that the two distinguished scholars from outside, one is Dr. Sujit Kumar Paul, Professor, Department of Lifelong Learning and Extension. Viswabharati University, West Bengal, yet another important uh, university and very important distinguished scholar, Dr. Sujit Kumar Paul. He is going to deliver the topic is Tagore's philosophy on rural reconstruction and inclusive development. Formerly, 
he will be introduced by our director kalpana kausik director indian adult education associations i am not going to introduce more about our distinguished professor dr sudish kumar paul i am also equally happy that dr s sivakumar associate professor school of governance and development studies college of law and governance hawasa university of ethiopia who also joined in the online program to deliver a lecture on equity and social justice social political issues in focus so these two important distinguished persons who joined us on behalf of <coughs> our gandhi gram rural institute on behalf of the indian adult education association on behalf of the center for women studies i wholeheartedly welcome all of you and this is also very important for us that uh, uh, mrs kalpana kausik director indian adult education association also joined with us and dr s s vijayanjali director in charge center for women studies has also joined us in this program and very many distinguished scholars at the national level and international level sri kailas chowdhury the former president of indian adult education association and currently he is the advisor for the indian adult education association from mahu madhya pradesh he has joined and many many distinguished scholars who all joined in this program to uh, you know uh, to remember and to celebrate this important day of day of the world day of social justice dear friends when we talk about the social justice there are many great organizations a permanent mission of hrg republic on the un and the international labor organizations ilo in partnership with the international telecommunication union itu and the united nations conference on trade and development and the un department of economic and social affairs are all joined together to discuss about this important event through online dialogue with the youth advocates the younger generations for younger entrepreneurs on their vision for social justice and shared prosperity and will be followed by an in person and side event so this is a very important event why because the theme of this year has been chosen as an uh, overcoming barriers and unleashing opportunities for social justice also mostly this is in connections with conflict in connections with social problems in connections with poverty in connections with injustice how are we going to tackle this all these problems in order to maintain peace tranquility and also uh, to live together as a humanity mostly the focus is on the green digital and care economy and on young people's participation so this is very important for us in this academic world as well as the world arena people are mostly discuss and on various aspect but this is very important social justice even though we have passed 70 years 75 years of our independence and 
73rd we completed the republic but still we have problems and still we have lot of inequalities injustice and the dichotomy and the conflict between the rich and the poor and the gap is widening very deeply but at the same time we must understand as we have the more youth population the dividend of this india we have to understand how to make this social justice as a unique one and to invite this values to live together come together understand together and to make ourselves more committed to discuss deliberate and prioritize our problems and shape our choices and also choose that new dream for new development so with this few words once again i welcome all the distinguished scholars and especially our registrar who has kind enough to accept our invitations to deliver the inaugural address today so on behalf of all these great organizations sir and um, we are very happy and we would be very much delighted to hear your uh, inaugural speech and also uh, my own student our own student our alumni of gandhigram rural institute dr s sivakumar from ethiopia he is going to deliver the real picture of this social justice so with this few words i conclude my welcome address and i wish all of you to have a great day and to listen to the great people and let us all come together to work for to create a world peace thank you very much very kind of you thank you professor for your welcoming the dignitaries it's our pleasure to invite the registrar of gandhigram rural institute to inaugurate the webinar may i request dr vpr sivakumar registrar gri for inaugural address very good afternoon to all of you most respected professor dr l raja who has given the welcome address the program coordinator mrs kalpana kausik and dr r venkat ravi the special invitees that is the resource persons for this program dr sujit kumar pal professor department of lifelong learning and extension vishwabharati university west bengal and dr s shivakumar associate professor school of governance and development studies college of law and governance avasa university ethiopia and uh, other faculty members dr s vijayanjali director in charge center for women studies the guest faculties other students and participants of this special lecture program organized by department of lifelong learning and extension gandhigram rural institute and center for women studies in collaboration with indian adult education association new delhi a special lecture on world day of social justice really i'm very happy to be a part of this program because the united nations has designated some special days special uh, events special years and this is one of the special day to be celebrated on on these occasions on on these celebrations we have to think and reframe restructure and readjust to the recent advancements directions government guidelines likewise 
the each year the day is designated with a specific theme i am i came to understand that this year the theme for the program is overcoming barriers and unleashing opportunities for social justice therefore the 2023 world day of social justice provides an opportunity to encourage dialogue with other member countries and uh, we have professor from department of lifelong learning and extension from uh, vishwa bharati university west bengal dr sujit kumar pal going to deliver the special lecture on sahu's philosophy on rural reconstruction and inclusive development let me invite mrs uh, kalpana kausik director indian adult education association new delhi and one of the program coordinator of this webinar to introduce the speaker thank you so much gyan saranya thank you very much good afternoon and welcome to this important session on world day of social mm -hmm. justice the general assembly of united nations mm -hmm. proclaimed 20th february as world day of social justice at its 62nd session in november 2007 social justice is the view that everyone deserves equal economic political and social rights as well as opportunities social workers aim to open the doors of access and opportunities for everyone particularly those in greatest need the idea behind social justice is that we all have innate values as human beings and no person's value is more or less than anyone else thank you to each and every one of you for being here with us today we are pleased to welcome you all this task of introducing our invited guest is a great privilege professor sujit paul is a man of virtue and simplicity he is a living inspiration to the many we are also lucky that he really find way to be with us today despite of the distance and his hectic schedules professor sujit paul is a social scientist he has his master master and phd degree in rural development from vishwa bharti shanti niketan a pious place of gurudev ravindranath tagore currently he is the professor in the same university in department of lifelong learning and extension he is a development practitioner researcher and resource person in the field of rural development and management he has conducted several research projects he is engaged in teaching research and also guiding phd scholars as fertile writer he has published more than 120 research papers on various developmental issues in the national and international journal of repute moreover he authored 11 books on various development issues he also edited three issues of the international journal of world education published by awe international professor paul visited different countries for academic research and extension activities he is closely associated with government and non government and civil society organizations in different capacities he is also awarded with the prestigious bharat shiksha ratan award by the global society for health and educational growth in 2015 and mother teresa sadbhavna award for his outstanding achievement in individual contribution for national economic and social development in 2016 and vishesh uh, gorav acharya teacher of special honor by the south asian academy for uh, good governance sri lanka at sri lanka foundation colombo in 2018 He has also been serving as vice president of AWE International, an organization that holds consultative status with the Economic and Social Council in the United Nations for the last 22 years. Welcome, sir. We are eagerly waiting to listen to you about Guru Dev's philosophy on rural reconstruction. Guru Dev Tagore wanted the welfare of. their minds to give strength and consciousness i quote tagore reading and writing is a secondary question communication from heart to heart is what matters more we welcome you sir you are requested to unmute yourself and address the attendees thank you very much thank you kalpana ji namaskar um at the outset i want to uh, express my Uh, sincere gratitude and uh, thanks to the organizing committee 
especially um, Honorable Registrar, uh, Andhra Rural Institute, and uh, uh, Professor El Raja, head of the department, and also the president of our uh, Indian Adult Education Association, Professor uh, Ravi, and other faculty members of the uh, you know, Department of Lifelong Learning and Extension, Gandhi Rural Institute, and also the uh, faculty members and director of uh, the Center for Women's Studies. Uh, I can see that uh, Oyazi uh, is here, uh, former president of uh, Indian Adult Education Association. So uh, I'm very much thankful for giving me this opportunity to share some of my views with uh, all of you. Uh, let me um, share my presentation because uh, due to internet connectivity, um, I think uh, I have tried to uh, write most of my uh, pictures uh, through this uh, slides so that everyone can see, uh, uh, you know, I'm Yes, uh, I have been, can you see? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. it's very clear, go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I have been assigned to speak uh, on Tagore's rural reconstruction experiment and inclusive development. Um, as you know that uh, uh, we all know Rabindranath uh, Tagore uh, because uh, uh, he is known uh, as the writer of our, our uh, national anthem, and also he got Nobel Prize um, in uh, 1930. This is the building you can see uh, from where uh, Tagore initiated a rural reconstruction experiment in Sriliketa uh, in uh, 1912. This building was uh, purchased from uh, local uh, Jamindars in 1912. Uh, to, to, to conduct some rural, ex, uh, rural reconstruction experiment in our country, in particular in Sri Lanka. And as I mentioned that uh, uh, Rabindranath uh, written our national anthem and also got Nobel Prize in uh, 1913. But uh, Rabindranath Tagore was uh, a phenomenon. Basically, we used to know him as a poet, but he was a phenomenon. And it is hard to believe what he achieved in one lifetime. And uh, he is not only the greatest of Indian poets, but also a patriot, a philosopher, an artist, an educationist, a humanist, and so many other things. For a long time, he is at the center of the Indian's life. He is a poet for all readers and for all ages. This is very important because uh, what he has written it is basically for all the readers and uh, for all ages. He has such a wide range of creativity that one can begin with Tagore and end with Tagore. I, I think uh, in Bengal it is called Sahaj Path. So at the beginning and in your childhood, the, the, the children, they can start with, with Sahaj Path. And I mean, at the old age, there are lots of uh, you know music, songs and writings of Tagore. And particularly in the field of rural reconstruction, he was a pioneer of our country. Here I want to mention that uh, the first community development block that was established in Siliketan. And uh, you all know that the first development program that is called uh, Community Development Program, CDP, that was uh, started in 1952 on 2nd October. That idea was also taken from Rabindranath Tagore. Um, so he was the pioneer of uh, our country on rural reconstruction. So before uh, discussing about the rural, rural reconstruction experiment, let me discuss about Tagore's philosophy on education in brief, because education and rural reconstruction is very much related. So the aim of education for Tagore is to realize the complete man, the eternal man and the universal man in one's being. Tagore was unsatisfied with the popular method of education, particularly uh, the colonial system of education, which according to him is not useful for uh, practical purposes. 
and which cannot properly educate man to be a universal man. Eagle emphasizes that man is essentially a social being and hence his ideal of education should be how to be a useful member of the society, to be a good citizen of the country. Nowadays, uh, we know that what is happening all over the country and even all over the world. So this word, particularly these, uh, uh, these things, uh, the idea of the philosophy of Tudor is very important that he emphasizes that, you know, uh, the idea should be, the, the idea of education should be how to be a useful member of the society and to be a good citizen of the country. He says, I quote, where mind is developed, there should be open space around it. In nature, one's mind can take that open air variously and beautifully, unquote. One can learn from the sky, trees, air, and animals, that means through the nature, and that give him the best education. According to Tagore, the aim of education is to strengthen our sense of values, as well as to provide us training to apply them. So from that perspective, Rabindranath initiated Brahma Chodja Shram, which started functioning formally from December 22, 1901, with five students. And, uh, you know, his father, basically, Rabindranath Tagore, he was, you know, started this program here in Shantiniketan. And this Brahma Chodja Shram that was converted to uh, Pathabhavan in 1935. Now you can see here, if you visit our place or Santaniketan, definitely some of you already have visited. And you can see even uh, today, the students of Pathabhavan, they are, uh, you know, uh, their classes are running under the nature, under the tree, under the, uh, you know, uh, sun. And uh, in 23rd December 21, Vishwabharati became a registered public body which adopted a constitution of its own. And this Institute of Rural Reconstruction that was founded in 1922 at Srinagar. And the first director was Leonard K. Elmast. He was a young, uh, you know, a guy from uh, uh, England, uh, studied at Illinois University of America. So he came here to join with Rabindranath Tagore. Uh, to work particularly on this rural reconstruction experiment. A new type of school that is called Siksha Satru, it is meant mainly for the children of neighboring villages, as because uh, Rabindranath started doing work for the rural reconstruction, the rural reconstruction work in the surrounding villages. So he also initiated one school called Shika Satru, where mainly vocational type of education will be given. Uh, in this Kashatra. Even today, if you come to this uh, uh, Shrenikatan, you can see this school. And uh, though this is under uh, you know, Vishwabharati, and uh, we are uh, you know, uh, uh, taking examination in uh, Madhomik and class 10 and class 10 plus 2 level, but uh, still the vocational training is going on in these schools even today. Um, Shikha Satcharcha, that will come later in, uh, that uh, started in 1937. As you know, as I mentioned that Vishwabharati is located in twin campus. One is Shantiniketan and another one is Sriniketan. Shantiniketan was, uh, uh, you know, founded uh, basically by Rabindranath Tagore to impart education to the students. And on the other end, Sriniketan uh, was basically uh, the uh, experiment of Santaniketan education system. It was the laboratory because uh, the, 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 the program that was started uh, uh, with uh, five students and it was the idea that the students, uh, they will uh, come to the villages and learn from the villages and going back and sit with the teachers, try to uh, solve the problems. Again, they will come back to the villages and try to solve the uh, problems of the villagers uh, in consultation uh, with the community, you know, jointly and cooperating. So uh, education was started in Shantaniketan, as I already mentioned. The main idea was visiting villages and getting acquainted with them had, for instance, been part of the curriculum 
for the students and teachers of Santaniketan. Now, let me, uh, it will be very clear and uh, each and every word is very important. Why Rabindranath initiated Sriniketan and why he initiated this rural reconstruction experiment in Sriniketan. The objective for the formation of Sriniketan by Rabindranath Tigo was you know, to bring back life in its completeness into the villages, making them self-reliant and self-respectful, acquainted with the cultural tradition of their own country and competent to make an efficient use of modern sources for the improvement of their physical, intellectual and economic condition. He wanted to make the people a complete man, right from health, education, sanitation, drinking water in every aspect. And another important thing is that <clears throat> Rabindranath mostly used the term rural reconstruction. His idea was that we have plenty of resources within the villages. So let us reconstruct those villages. And also, he wanted the holistic development, integrated development. As I already mentioned that every aspect, we have to develop the villages. And his idea was, uh, you know, threefold idea. Uh, that was, uh, first one is winning affection and confidence of the villages. This is most important when uh, we used to go to the uh, villages to work for their development. If we cannot win their confidence, we cannot do any work. So that was his uh, idea. And then studying rural problems and conducting research for the solution. And then passing out the gain knowledge to the villages so that problems can be solved cooperatively and jointly for all round development. You know, if you go to the vision and mission of Mabar, you can see almost the same, you know, ideology uh, has been written in their vision and mission. And presently, you all are aware that uh, uh, under this uh, Unnat Bharat Vijan, this program, the government of initiated, you know, each and every higher education institute is have to adopt uh, five villages and uh, to work uh, for their development. And for that also, uh, this idea we have to adopt. So, uh, triple ideas of Tagore. So, Tagore uh, viewed that the soul of India lies in her villages. Even Gandhi also said that uh, India lives in its villages. And only when the villages are awakened and raised its full potential peace will India be truly developed. Tagore believed that the education of the people would change their attitudes and behavior to a great extent, which will empower them to think positively and contribute meaningfully to self and the society at large. Tagore felt that the care of sinister, malaria stricken people at the time here in this area, uh, the people suffered uh, due to malaria a lot, who live in poverty and despair had to be included in the scheme of education. In order to help them, the villages have to be reconstructed. Tagore's mission of rural reconstruction was based on four principles. These four principles are also very, very, very important. One is self-interest, self-respect, self-reliant, and joy in work. Tagore wanted to construct the villages in such a way that the villagers will be self-sufficient in all their needs. He wanted to make the people a complete man and make the people aware of the larger society through appropriate education and inspire them to cultivate the spirit of cooperation and self-reliance. So, Rabindranath was the pioneer for his experiment in rural reconstruction in India, and the institute developed by him at Sriniketan soon became the model for rural development elsewhere. Even today, if you go through the uh, you know, adopted scheme by our central government, you can see the, like, you know, the Swachh Bharat Revision, Skill India Movement, all these things, even new education policy, these things was uh, basically taken from uh, Rabindranath Tagore. His idea is still exists. And now I can say that uh, uh, long back, almost 100 years back, what Rabindranath thought we are thinking even today. Like initially the activities of Sriniketan were threefold. These were research and experiments, training, and extension development uh, activities. Even the, if you go through the uh, you know, guidelines of the UGC, 
uh, this teaching, research, and extension and field level technique. So this was long back in 1922. So at Siddhiketan, there were four different educational institutions. Shikha Shatru, as I already mentioned, this is for village boys. And Lok Shikha Sangshal means a uh, distance learning center. This is that was 1956 for those who wanted to study without going to school and college. And the Sikha Chorcha Bhavan for village school teachers, now this is B.A.D. BA and other uh, degrees. And then, even at that time, he started Diploma in Rural Reconstruction in 1922 for the college students. So from this, we can say that uh, his, his thinking on education was uh, definitely, we are borrowing even today. So the fundamental premise of the Srinikata education was uh, in its teaching of handicrafts, which included leather work, weaving, book binding, needlework, pottery, wood carving, and block printing handicrafts taught at Shilpa Bhavan. Here we have one Shilpa Bhavan. Recently, it is called Shilpa Shodan. Here we are now offering some uh, Bachelor of Design courses. But we are also offering some training program for the village youths. So we are including the village youths uh, through this sort of training program so that uh, they can be self life and they can uh, earn their own food. Uh, I have a little bit modified uh, the idea of uh, the, and the philosophy of uh, Tagore's rural reconstruction, but I think uh, it was the main idea um, at the time uh, of Rabindranath Tagore. Srinikat, I mean, Rabindranath uh, initiated uh, his work in three villages. He started his work in three villages first. At present, we are working in uh, 65 uh, villages. So his idea was first um, uh, selection of uh, the area or selection of village. And then uh, it is important to build the rapport. As I already mentioned, his idea was threefold. And most important uh, uh, idea was uh, to gather the conflict and uh, to build the rapport with the people, with the community. And then, uh, I mean, uh, this PRA and PL exercise. You know, are all aware that uh, at present, Robert Chimba, he is the pioneer of this PRA exercise. But uh, long back, Rabindranath uh, started doing work uh, involving the community. And that's that was uh, participatory. PRA is the participatory role at the present. And the present it is called participatory learning and action. So this uh, exercise um, I mean, uh, started long back, and then uh, it is also not possible to you know work in all the villages, and that's why uh, Rabindranath uh, started. Uh, the, I mean, uh, in, uh, told that uh, or suggested to uh, work in few villages. Um, at the same time, it is also you know not possible to work, uh, to deal with all the problems. So uh, uh, this community problem analysis exercise, then uh, this identification and prioritization of the development option. So identify the problem and we have to prioritize those problems. After that, uh, this is important to conduct this IFPR, that is called issue focused participatory rural apparatus. So PRA was there and uh, PRA, we have to, it is the most important and effective method uh, for collection of data and also to implement the activity. So, through participatory. So, uh, when we prioritize the problem, uh, we can go for the issue focus participatory work appraisal. After that, we can go for work plan design. And then uh, uh, we have to go for this training, exposure, awareness, and the selection of appropriate persons to implement that uh, project or program. Then implementation and uh, sometimes you need evaluation and also monitoring. Feedback analysis of the problems are very important because as I already mentioned that uh, the, uh, the students of Santaniketan, they used to come to the villages and uh, try to know the problems of the villages going back to the uh, school, discuss with the teachers and after coming back, uh, jointly and cooperatively involving the community try to implement the program. So feedback analysis of uh, the problems is, are very important. And in between, uh, most of the things we have to do uh, through some uh, group discussion.
So this is a model I have tried to develop, but that idea I have taken from Rabindranath Tagore. This is called participatory planning approach. Uh, I will um, just uh, try to mention some of the uh, present intervention uh, through which you can understand the, the God's philosophy on uh, rural reconstruction as well as, well as uh, inclusive development. At present, uh, we are working in 50 villages, but now it's 65 villages uh, because uh, the MO has done um, with other uh, village community. Uh, this is in two community development blocks and eight gram panchayats. And most important thing uh, that you know we have, uh, particularly the Department of Life Learning and Extension or other adult and continuing education and extension departments, uh, we all are facing some problems, uh, you know, the staff problems. Uh, scarcity of staff. So it is not possible. Even um, Rabindranath also at that time uh, the thought that uh, we have to involve the community. And that's why we try to develop the village development societies in the villages. And we try to strengthen those village development societies through which we can work in the villages. So each uh, village uh, development society led by the youths of the village have been formed and that operate as the nodal agency of village development work. So this is the <clears throat> operation idea. And uh, just uh, in our present activities, uh, we are, as I have mentioned, that we are strengthening, we are forming the village development societies in the villages. You can say that these are one sort of NGOs because uh, we, have, we are registering uh, their organization under particular societies registration act so you can other way call that those are NGOs and uh, we are also forming the Mahila Shumtis uh, Women's Forum and at present um, uh, self-help groups are there. Rural Library Services uh, we are uh, doing uh, at that time Rabindranath initiated Chalantika Grantaka that is mobile library services I will come one by one. Organizing Bratibadok activities in the villages that is children scout in the villages involving the children, vocational training program, then uh, promotion and preservation of crafts, and then uh, promotion and preservation of folk cultural activities in the villages, health sensitization and health extension program, and promotion of village uh, traditional sports, observing some days, celebrating some days, and establish, establishing linkages with uh, line departments or other institutions. So these are the activities. You know, most of these activities was there at the time of Rabindranath Tagore. Okay, uh, even you can ask me the question there at that time whether the self help group was there. Yes, it was there at that time. Uh, this Thormogula system uh, was initiated by L.K. Elmas with the help of uh, two other person, uh, Kali Mohan Ghosh and Gold Ghosh, uh, in the year 1922, with the uh, advice of Rabindranath Tagore. Other things are, uh, are definitely for that. Now, uh, in village development societies, we have 50 village development societies, 24 Mohila societies. What we are doing? We are uh, conducting uh, all activities related to village development, uh, continuous monitoring of each wings, and then uh, public relation and establishes linkages with this our department and other development agencies. Also, uh, Managing orientation to the members. This is very, very important. We have sometimes invite them. We used to go there. And, uh, uh, you know, at that time also, uh, the, the people, I mean, the staff members, uh, and at that time, the volunteer workers, they used to go to the villages uh, to meet with them. So, meeting with uh, the representative on uh, the regular intervention, capacity development of the societies. And uh, at present, it is important regular monitoring for their audit registration and renewal. So these are the things we are doing and the same thing uh, we are doing in case of Mahila Sumitis, uh, but uh, the added advantage is that most of the income generating activities are going on uh, Mahila Sumitis and uh, regular meeting and appropriate action for domestic conflict. Domestic conflict, you know, it is uh, uh, common in the villages. So this is uh, the, uh, this thing we are doing. And, uh, this uh, Mahila Samiti is there also uh, supporting the self-help group, uh, uh, self groups and also forming the self-help groups. Broti Balak organization, this is uh, basically uh, was the idea of uh, Rabindranath Tagore 
and also L.K. Mark, Leonard K. Mars, who was the first director of our Institute of World Reconstruction in 1922. Basically, uh, the boys and girls, uh, you can say Roti Balok organization. Balok means boys, but uh, Rabindranath uh, used this term Balok, means both the boys and girls. Uh, these boys and girls uh, between 6 to 14 years of age, they are mobilized into groups and uh, motivated for welfare activities along with regular physical exercise. The main objective was uh, to develop active second line of leadership. Nowadays, if you go to the villages, you can see that uh, the village development societies, uh, those who are running those village development societies or those who are the secretaries or presidents or other uh, you know, governing body members, actually they were the you know, children, I mean, the scouts or, you know, Bhuti Baloks or Bhuti Balikas. And uh, also, so uh, these, these uh, the boys and girls, they are now taking responsibility to develop uh, or to lead the village or to develop the uh, village community. To undertake physical exercise, this is most important even today. And to develop awareness about the social issues. Uh, if you, uh, you know, make uh, aware these uh, children about the social issues and I think uh, uh, they will do some good work for the village and of course to develop the spirit of community services and we are happy to say that uh, you know due to these political issues uh, many things are happening in the surrounding areas but uh, uh, these 50 villages if you go there and you can see that you can find uh, almost in, uh, I mean, uh, no type of, you know, uh, there is no such uh, sort of violence uh, in the villages. I can't say no such a violence, but I mean, they are taking some responsibility to reduce those violences. So these are the core areas of both the organization. You can see from here, from this uh, chart. And uh, the activities which are, we are doing, um, you know, physical exercise, information collection, uh, like uh, leaf collection, medicinal plants, uh, to inform about the idea about the medicinal plants, organized cultural programs, uh, they are uh, planning for uh, children's crafts making. Uh, this you can see God of Honor because uh, in such six February is the uh, annual anniversary of Sriniketan uh, 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 festival. So they used to come and near about uh, 600 uh, these children, they, children, they used to come on 6th February to show their uh, uh, performance and of course sports and booty uh, dog. These are the activities they are doing. Rural library services, um, uh, I know, um, as I said that uh, uh, Rabindranath at, at, uh, during his time, he uh, started mobile library services. He used to talk Chalantika Granthaga. In English, it is called mobile library service. And now we are running with the help of Raja Ramon Rai Library Foundation under the Ministry of Culture. And the main objective is to develop reading habits among the villagers and to help to retain acquired knowledge literacy skill for the new literate. To use library as a center of uh, cultural communication and to provide all updated information regarding modern and advanced science and technology. And the use to use the center for sharing sustaining and strengthening the knowledge base of the uh, people. We, um, you know, these are the uh, statistics uh, at present, uh, 38 libraries are there. And most important thing is that the librarians and assisted librarians, they are working voluntarily without any money. Uh, it's just a brief uh, idea that uh, what we are doing uh, with the, uh, in the villages to, uh, on these rural libraries, even sometimes we used to give some sort of training, particularly uh, computer literacy, literacy training, book binding uh, training, so that uh, the villagers to themselves, uh, you know, do their work. Um, now, what is happening everywhere, almost you will find that we have constructed uh, 38 rural library buildings with the help of Raja Ram Mohan Rai Library Foundation. And those buildings, uh, that those buildings are not only as a library, they are using not only as a library, build, library, but this is an information center, this is also a mass education center, cultural center, literacy center, now discussion uh, center, knowledge center, 
uh, public relations center and also leaders amenity center so they are working all type all types of activities on uh, in this library building uh, you know nowadays uh, what we are doing that uh, uh, we have uh, the department and we are working through the development societies also we have formed circle groups we have rural uh, you know multiple organizations uh, mohila samitis but uh, still in the villages we found drop out so we tried to do one work to retain um, these uh, students and to bring back the students to the primary school as well as to the high school because many cases we, we have seen that the students uh, sometimes due to mostly due to fear and uh, due to you know support they cannot they are not ready to go to the schools so uh, we have tried it is in another sense we can say this main study center we can say this sort of coaching center involving the youth you know those learned youth i mean educated youth there are uh, some educated youth is there uh, in the villages because the bhuti organization or children scout that is run uh, organized by one group leader and bhuti leader uh, bhuti nayak and bhuti naika that is group, uh, uh, no bhuti leaders so so some educated uh, uh, youth are there involving those youth we try to run a center through which these dropout students they come and give, we try to give some sort of coaching this uh, is being done by the village development societies and supported by the circle groups it's a very unique program we have you know, you know I mean, we have got a good result for this self help group i am i am not going in detail uh, to discuss about the self help group we all are aware about the self help group but uh, we are also now running the self help groups at present we have 120 self help groups but we try to uh, uh, implement this self help group program with the philosophy uh, of rabindranath tagore because rabindranath wanted to uh, stand uh, on their own feet and self help group I, the idea of self help group also the same but here uh, the government is used to try to give the subsidy and other sort of uh, extra benefit to the women for their empowerment but uh, we try to uh, think on that way that no subsidy if you want if you interested to uh, stand on your own feet please join with us and uh, try to uh, uh, you know do this activity and join this program this way we are working on circle group some activities of circle group uh, so uh, the time is short so i'll uh, just as i already mentioned the folk cultural activities to revive and uh, you know uh, to uh, encouraging the village development societies to uh, find the creative folk artists and uh, in their villages and organizing shows in their own uh, village and organizing uh, uh, folk cultural programs and also Uh, providing platform to the potential folk artists because uh, the traditional folk art um, is uh, reducing a lot to revive this traditional folk cultural activities we are doing uh, that program uh, as i already mentioned that uh, rabindranath initiated shilpa bhavan present it is called shilpa sadan this is for promotion of crafts even he also initiated shikha shatra the school of uh, the school for the uh, village children uh, there also Uh, uh, this uh, program, this uh, promotion of crafts, uh, the training program for them, and arrangement of marketing, arrangement of uh, development of skill, those types of activities we are doing, involving even at this time we have uh, formed one uh, organization involving all these uh, crafts person in the surrounding villages. So uh, this crafts promotion program is another important program uh, during uh, the time of the Minimum Take Off. some selected crafts um, uh, you know the batik is uh, you know rabindranath uh, sent his um, son uh, wife uh, to america for uh, taking, taking training on this uh, batik and this lac work so some traditional um, you know uh, crafts are there that is uh, very famous as santali ketan craft uh, also we are offering uh, various vocational training program Uh, it is uh, need based, but including uh, this ancient badli, this uh, leather work, uh, this lac work, it still exists in Shantiniketan. 
uh, some of the activities. Health extension, just a few words I will try to uh, mention that Rabindranath uh, initiated health cooperative. At that time, he initiated four cooperatives, but uh, you know, at present, uh, government support is there. Everywhere we will find PHC, um, uh, service centers. So uh, people are now mostly going to the, the these uh, centers, but still today, uh, we are running one um, the health cooperative and uh, doing some sort of activities through the health cooperatives and besides that uh, you know for the precaution on uh, for the prevention uh, preventive uh, health work uh, we uh, used to give some sort of awareness to the village community on various uh, uh, diseases eclipses of uh, this health and extension uh, intervention sports uh, activities also we are doing with the help of we have on uh, physical education department at present, we are doing uh, uh, and encouraging the traditional uh, and uh, you know interesting uh, you know uh, 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 sports and games in the villages. Uh, you know uh, our Rovindra Samrit is uh, very famous. So uh, to explore and um, you know to 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 uh, uh, you know uh, to to provide some sort of uh, training to the uh, children on Ravindra Shungit. We have uh, formed one music unit here in Sanekata Nandava department and uh, the teachers, music teachers, they used to go to the villages and teach Ravindra Shungit to the uh, village uh, girls and boys. Also observe uh, some days, specific days, it is very important, you know very well. Today we are observing the uh, one day. This is very, very important uh, for effectively uh, work in the community, the village, in the country. I will conclude with this uh, indicated model on inclusive, uh, uh, inclusive development. So uh, uh, in my previous discussion, I have uh, mentioned all issues like in the center, we have village development societies and we are running uh, activities like rural library services, uh, we are uh, organizing Bhuti, uh, Bhuti Balok Sangathan organization, uh, also self-help group, Mahila Samitis, also doing craft promotion activity and health promotion activity. And through this, uh, you know, integrated approach, each and everything is related to each other. And uh, uh, all these activities uh, are, uh, you know, uh, implementing through uh, the village development societies in the villages. And through these village development societies, the um, left out people, the youth, the women, the children, the new literate, uh, the old people, all are coming together in this uh, the village development society, uh, particularly in the uh, rural library building, and uh, you know trying to uh, develop the village community as a whole. So with this, I uh, conclude my lecture and I once again thank you all. Thank you for um, patient hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing your extensive experiences on this topic. And uh, we have another more professor from School of Governance and Development Studies. College of Law and Governance, Avasa University, Ethiopia. Dr. S. Sivakumar going to deliver the special lecture on equity and social justice, socio-political issues in focus. Let me invite Dr. Venkatravi, Associate Professor, Department of Lifelong Learning and Extension, Gandhigram Rural Institute, and one of the program coordinator of this webinar to introduce the speaker Um, good afternoon. Um, we are happy to introduce uh, uh, Professor Yes Yes Siva Kumar, Associate Professor working in the Avasa University. And uh, coincidences is an uh, one of a, a proud alumni of uh, Gandhi Ramdur Institute. And uh, is a very learned person and is a very good friend of us. And uh, he has been uh, with us uh, for many programs. And always uh, we will, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, 
اہم انٹیگریٹ بوتھ پالیٹکس اینڈ سوشل ایکسپیکٹس اینڈ ویل بی ہی ہیز بین ڈلیورنگ لیکچرس آن دی گاندھی گرام رورل یونیورسٹی ٹاٹ پاپ اینڈ آف کورس ہی از این ایکسپرٹ ان دی فیلڈ آف ڈیولپمنٹ مینجمنٹ ہیچ آر ایم اینڈ پروجیکٹ پلاننگ اینڈ مینجمنٹ اینڈ ہی ہیز پکڈ اپ دی آل ڈائمنشنس ان سچ اے وے دیٹ uh he could be an excellent uh, professor in the field of uh, development management and development administration he has been uh, trained in the department of development administration and political science so it becomes very easy for him so his uh, academic credentials goes uh, in a lengthy and if i read it will take uh, it will go for about a couple of pages uh i would like to highlight here he was in uh, uh uh what to call an instrumental in the abasa university for starting two master's degree program which is an innovative program one is an on development management and another one is the governance and development and uh, that is a very 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 important in which he has taken it to in uh, a developing uh, and the developed country and developing countries where the he started the uh, uh the program which can uh, help to develop its own uh, human resources and one more thing is uh, by virtue of this academic excellence he is an uh, a well known uh, academic uh is in uh, many bo- boards and bodies in the ethiopian universities and uh, he is also an examiner and a uh, very interesting thing is he has been an examiner uh for Gandhi Gram Rural Institute and many other Indian universities and uh, by virtue of his uh, academic excellence and also uh, the human approach and uh, with a very strong academic background he continues to be there and uh, of course with his uh, credentials and proven track record uh, he has been uh, being consulted by the Czechoslovakia Republic and uh, a uh, world vision ethiopia and many other international organizations he has a lot of credentials on his shoulders and before all these with this he has not minus his efforts for the academic work because of that he has been made as an editor in chief for the ethiopian journal of governance and development what not is required for delivering a lecture on world day of social justice if not Shivak Kumar. Shivak Kumar, now it is over to you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, respected professor. Am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Yes. Thank you. The most respected and His Excellency, the Vice Chancellor of the University, Dr. Gurmit Singh, sir, in absentia, and the respected, the most respected visitor of the university who has delivered a very inspiring inaugural address, Dr. BPR Shivak Kumar, sir. the director of gandhi gram rural institute deemed university and the director of the lifelong learning center of gandhi gram university and the president the current president of indian adult education association new delhi my beloved professor my guru my sandhi sena guide and my mentor professor l raja sir and the coordinators of this event um, dr kalpana kausik and dr venkat ravi my blood friend from gandhi gram university and dr kalpana kausik ma'am from indian adult education association new delhi i am happy to be here with you the coordinators and, and in addition the center for women studies director in charge dr vijayanjali madam and the respected the former president of former president of the indian adult education association i also uh, happy to see your presence sir i also seen you before my the previous webinar and the second time for me to see you sir and the respected faculties researchers and my beloved student friends it's me shivak kumar i am here i have been given with a technology so today we are celebrating world social justice and i'd like to be here in gandhi gram through social media through google meet thanks to technology it is a great effort made by the organizers to make this session live and i also 
thank the, my previous um, uh, presenter who has delivered a fascinating experience of his own uh, rural reconstruction based on Rabindranath Tagore's ideology in his own area. It is a very micro, it is very uh, deep rooted and it is very fascinating lecture. I thank you as well, sir. My focus is going to be on more of global. Since I have been working in Ethiopia, I have devised my entire uh, today's presentation, it is going to be more of global in focus. So yours was more of micro. So it's a combination of micro and macro level you know, presentations. Equity and social justice, socio-political in focus. That's what my presentation and my outline of the presentation. Let me light, give a light on World Day of Social Justice and its significance, why we are here and what the significance of having this day in our mind and what is the agenda behind that one. Then how this world has been devastated owing to COVID-19 and the post-COVID-19 scenario, especially our economy and at the macro level. Then this is the theme, the current theme of the today's you know, day, the World Day of Social Justice that is about overcoming barriers and unleashing opportunities for social justice. So in this three dimension, my entire lecture, you know, today's you know, presentation will be going to be on these uh, areas. One is about World Day of Social Justice and its significance. And number two is about the devastating effects of post-19 you know, scenario. And it's, you know, what could be the possible sustainable way in unreleasing or overcoming barriers or un and tapping the opportunities for social justice. So with this, let me just, you know, friends, let me highlight about today's day. Of course, we are with this noble cause. We are with a significant effort taken by the organizers. So this is a commemoration of World Day of Social Justice. Every year, 20th of February marks the world social justice across global. It is to promote equal justice for all. So what does it mean by justice? So justice is more of law, but equity, equity is the tool for ensuring this justice. The main goal of celebrating or commemorating this day is to raise voice against social injustice and to bring communities together. So it is about including the excluded, reaching the unreached. These are all the mottos of Gandhi Gram. Reaching the unreached and reaching the doors of the people I think the lifelong learning and extension department have been working on these areas. As a student, of, I'm happy to say that I'm very much delighted to share with you that I do have this an experience when I was during my stay of about 12 years. I stayed for my undergraduate, master's and PhD programs. I am very much delighted to share this experience as well. So the day also raises, this day raises awareness in eliminating poverty. Poverty, inequality, unemployment, and these are the macroeconomic factors which are having micro, you know, significant devastating effect in the lives of the people. So what type of poverty we have? We have been, you know, facing a poverty of relative poverty. And countries like Ethiopia and other poor countries like uh, uh, Kenya, Sudan, South Sudan, these countries are having a focus of, you know, this chronic poverty, mass poverty, absolute poverty. Even I could see there are a lot of people struggling for survival, unable to meet basic communities. Even eating a one day is a challenging. But on the other hand, if you see the developed nations like US, UK and Germany, they have rich and varied life. So the lifestyle matters. As our professor has mentioned in his in a welcome address, Professor Raja has very clearly mentioned that there is a devastating gap between rich and poor. Affluent are having different lifestyle and whereas poor are struggling. In the same world, the world is the same, but it is not a level flooding field for everyone. Everybody has you know, different lifestyle. It is based on their income, their education, their health care. There are a lot of social development aspects that helps, that hinders the lifestyle of the people. Again, if you see poverty is like an omnipresent, it's like a god, it is everywhere. It's not only in rich and poor countries, it is also there in rich countries. So the, the most important thing is about eliminating poverty, 
you may ask me a question is it possible to remove poverty from our society like our uh, uh, the founder of microfinance professor mohammed yunus he said that once one day our grandchildren will go to museum and see how poverty was like let me repeat again one day our grandchildren will go to museum and see how poverty was like that means there will be no more poverty in this world poverty will disappear if you promote the habit of saving are we doing that to what extent you know we have been doing that so this is the you know critical question we have to raise in this day and we have to realize raising questions and realizing questions and working for those things are very pivotal that's what is not only raising awareness eliminating poverty suppose of course it is there even the, our millennium development goal and sustainable development goal we have been arguing that you know reducing poverty level of level it is the millennium development goal the objective of millennium development the first objective is about halving the population of poor in the world whereas uh, our sustainable development goal it says no poverty no hunger so are we realizing this you know this is what the question of today and gender again it another very important issue about gender when we talk about gender you know this is still it is you know uh, we could see there are a lot gap there is a lot of gender disparity gender imbalances and we need to have gender mainstreaming and gender budgeting and we are supposed to have gender lens everywhere to promote gender mainstreaming and to and to integrate gender in development this is the you know need of the hour again if you go go back to the countries like you know poor countries where i have been working in ethiopia we could see at at the school level as well as at the college and university level out of 100 students we can see only four or five females even today i can say even today at masters level only one girl student we have been having every year one student i used to ask them are you representing your gender this is what you know this is a scenario we can see from the countries like you know well this has to be changed but with regard to parliamentarian seats in parliament in ethiopia they have got in almost 33 point almost in more than 50 you know, around 50 percentage they have been given affirmative action so now slowly the governments have been taking different steps like affirmative action to enroll you know female children in the school so the same is true in remote villages of india as well so but our scenario is far better than other countries but this has to be level and physical discrimination this is very very you know unethical unacceptable behavior in the work environment even in anywhere people should not be discriminated because of their physical appearance even you know this is too uh, you know this is too very this is too happening in many places that this has to be addressed with very static as well as in immediate you know measures should be taken for this and religious discrimination of course um, we have a constitution that guarantees you know what they call it, tolerance and then um, uh, religious uh, you know acceptance for all religions but still still we have religious discrimination in some places but other countries like for example you know throughout the world in ethiopia as well there are you no know, discriminations among the same ethnic groups as well as same religious groups and even very recently that you might have seen in news that is orthodox christianity within west christianity they have discrimination so, you know they are claiming that we are superior others are you know subordinate and the like and illiteracy by the way i don't like the word illiteracy no one is illiterate in this world everyone is literate illiterate. everyone is literate rather we can say they cannot able to read and write it is better to say illiteracy but you know i don't know why they, how they use this term illiteracy no one it is not you know you can say there is no formal literacy but it is better to say and lack of formal literacy but no one is illiterate in this world but, but they cannot be able to read and write of course significant school dropout significant female children's dropout this scenario has to be changed so governments throughout the world have been taking number of efforts especially the less developing countries they have been working on this scenario so this initiative could start in creating an integrated society so the society which is of inclusive of every dimensions of development the theme of this year as we have seen this year theme is about i think most of our you know previous you know um, guests they have already had this idea of overcoming barriers and 
policing opportunities. So when we look back at the history and significance of this, you know, um, the pandemic situation, natural disasters and climatic change and geopolitical tensions and armed conflicts, these are the, some of the exaggerated factors. Owing to these factors, so the, the this is the scenario we have to realize more and more about these uh, aspects. So the economic and you know, social crisis of about social crisis due to owing to uh, pandemic, social crisis owing to natural disasters, climatic change, geopolitical tensions, armed conflict, and the like. So, but when you see when you see the the exact date as uh, Kalpana Hausik ma'am uh, highlighted in her presentation on November 16, 2007. The UN Assembly declared February 20 will be the World Day of Social Justice. It is to integrate the communities. On June 10, 2008, the International Labour Organization also endorsed ILO's declaration on social justice for equitable globalization. Friends, what does it mean by equitable globalization? So are we having a world which is a flat world? No, it is not. because. There are hegemony. Some countries, they have domination over other countries. So they use them as a, a point of exploitation and they take raw materials and then they exploit labor force and then they, they used to have hegemony over those countries. So this scenario has to be changed, right? Like our Karl Marx said, you know, uh, dictatorship or proletariat and the like. Today, poverty and inequalities within and among countries are on the rise. So that we know very well. The scenario has been on the rise. The economic and social crisis have been exerted by, exerted by COVID-19 pandemic that we will see in detail. Natural disasters, and I'm also going to touch those aspects. Climatic change, geopolitical tensions, and armed conflicts. So, so recurrent conflict. Now let us start from devastating effect of COVID-19. You know, uh, the post-COVID-19 scenario and the life. So you see, uh, even today, the spillover effect of the post-COVID-19 is being observed throughout the countries. But normally, friends, if you see in the history, we used to divide the history by AD and BD, BC and the like. But before World War and after World War, and before Cold War and after Cold War. But now we have got a scenario that before COVID, after COVID. This is what we have the scenario right now. And economic superpowers and the livelihood of the people has been very much challenged by this current, you know, and then the persisting COVID-19 scenario. So we closed borders, no borders were closed, territory were closed, that we know very well. But the dichotomy, what exists is about to ensure equity, to ensure social justice. And there are there is an ongoing debate between economists and environmentalists. Economists, they used to always argue about, argue for economic growth. That is about you know increasing income, increasing per capita, increasing you know industrial expansion, modernization, mechanization, and the like. It is about the way in, in which the economists they look at in terms of sustainable income, sustained income or increased standard of living or poverty reduction. This is what the main motto of economists. Whereas the conservationist, environmentalist, environmentalist, they used to always in the argument of protecting or conserving the environment for sustainable development. So are we sustainable? And my question is about are we sustainable? How we are sustainable? No, let me tell you a story. Friends, um, when we see the resources, are we using our resources sustainable? Whether we are ensuring equity for the forthcoming generation. Let me tell you a story. There was a merchant. The merchant was supposed to travel. He was a nomad. He was supposed to travel in a desert for about uh, 25 days. And he's having a camel. And with that camel, he is supposed to travel for how many days? 25 days. Uh, from his origin to the destination, he is supposed to carry all his you know, footsteps as well as the travel uh, things along with him. 
So he started the first day, he started his travel. It was in a desert. The travel was in a desert. And he was traveling in a desert the first day, second day, and that day. It, it continues like that. After fifth day, and he, whatever he had, the footsteps as well as the water has been started reducing. And ultimately, after one week, he just you know, completely finished all the water he had. And now his water, what he was with him is depleted. He was now without water and foodstuffs, nothing. And he was having his camel. And then he is continuing his travel another one week. And he is left with, you know, remaining about you know, uh, around 11 days he is supposed to travel. And then uh, he was, you know, uh, looking for water. He is, he is very thirsty and he is looking for water and he is, you know, he has been searching the place in the desert. He is looking for a oasis. Oasis in the desert. Oasis is the place where a pastoral place in the desert. So he is looking for a oasis. And fortunately, after two days, after two weeks, after two days, I'm just telling you, after two weeks, after uh, it's about I, almost, you know, uh, it, 18th day, he has got a place in a house. And he was very much, you know, surprised and very much, you know, happy about the place. And he went there. After reaching there, he saw a hand pump. He saw a hand pump, and uh, he was surprised that he is going to have a water. His thinking is that he is going to have a water. And after reaching there, and there was a notice in front of that, you know, hand pump. There was a notice. And next to the notice, then a half liter water bottle. Not water bottle on those days. The half liter, you know, water was there in a pot. Okay, and then what he is supposed to do? He is supposed to uh, imagine that he is a merchant. He has been traveling for about you know uh, uh, more than twenty, around twenty days, and he got the place. And he, what he is supposed to do? If he wants to get water, he is supposed to throw that half liter water in the pump. That was the notice. The notice says, if you want to drink water from the pipe, if you want to get the water from the pipe, you are supposed to throw throw the water into the you know the pump, and then only you will get the water. Otherwise, you will not get. So imagine that if we are there, what we are supposed to do? Basically, you know, I may need a response from one or two uh, you know, participants. You can just give your answer there, you know, honest answer. I hope you got my story. Let me pause here. If the story is clear, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Just let me get the. Yes, sir. Yes, it's, it's audible. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So what what we will do? Normally, basically, we are looking for water. We don't get you know water for about twenty days, and we are not sure that whether after putting the water, we are not going to get the water from the pipe or not. What we normally do? We do normally the just drinking the water and then you know filling our you know what you call uh, our hunger. That's what we do. No, you know what that person, the merchant, he did. He tried. He put the water inside the pump. He was trying for the first time. He didn't get the water. Second time, third time, and it went up to ten times. Eleventh time, surprisingly, he got the water and he was dancing and then he was just you know filling all these tanks and then. He had a container, jerry can, and he filled the, the tank. And then after that, he was supposed to leave the pl uh, place. Before leaving, he did something. It is about uh, if anybody comes to take water from this pipe, the pipe is working. And he filled the bottle, and he filled the container, and he kept it there. So everybody can try. This is what we know. This is what sustainability. It's the resources. It's not only for us. You no, know, uh, it has to be preserved for forthcoming generations. It is what we, we most of the environmentalists they used to argue for sustainable development. You know, uh, just uh, utilizing the resources without compromising the resources of the future or forthcoming generation. Self-reliant way of life. Yet another important, you know, opportunity to ensure social justice. It is about self-reliant way of life. Shifting your production process. You know, it's not new to us. We have been facing economic lag, economic contraction, 
and then price increase throughout the you know world and even including india but this business cycle happens you know uh, with regard to less consumption in terms of except food they are consuming less low investment no investment across the sectors sometimes and low level of productivity some countries you know no investment at all and low level of productivity low profit hence we could see high level of unemployment as well so what could be the what do you call uh, recovery measures one of the measure is about this has been advocated by most of the scholars from different part of the world and including our indian government they have just you know realized this self reliant ideology as well as social safety measures so to overcome this current situation and financial justice and social equity the government has announced 20 lakh crore economic stimulus package covering five major pillars of the economy that you might have seen so most of the industrialist industrialist they are very much delighted about this initiative and um, of course uh, you may have a question in your mind how it could be possible besides having uh, you know globalization impacts how could could be possible how self reliant uh, resilient economy self reliant economy so the new liberal economists argue that you know it is advisable if the countries are connected with the global scenario it is easy for them to get access to different market trade and other opportunities so um, you may ask another some more questions like is it advisable to privatize our military or space sectors of course now it is in the process so why there are number of privileges have been announced for mncs and the like it is to promote you know highly integrated economy that can reduce you know uh, spatial inequalities spatial inequalities and to promote equity across sectors now friends uh, let me just you know introduce some of the capitals so far we know that there are different capitals which can help us to ensure uh, sustainable livelihood improvement and this can result eventually that can lead to equity and social justice sustainable livelihood improvements for ensuring social equity and social justice so improving the living standard of the people with the help of increased social capital increased natural capital increased human capital physical capital and physical capital so human capital of course this is a need of our investment in education you know what type of education we have it's not only for education purpose it should be based on market so in line with the market and we need to have education so that we can ensure equity training for capacity building and income generation so we we are supposed to capacity building activities or trainings that can bring you know uh, that can bring income generation activities and natural capital that we have already touched about this one it is about dust free environment regeneration of ecology less pollution for instance you know having a crystal clear water for in rivers and low carbon dioxide emission and the like and that to uh, promoting intergenerational equity and physical capital so it is about you know uh, international trade markets and the like even intra regional trades and to promote capitals activity social capital of course you know now uh, thanks to technology we have got a tremendous increase in social capital for instance social media and social capital so far our youths are being known for you know just wasting their time rather i, I can say investing their time instead of wasting time they can invest the time in social media so that they can build social capital so there are there are individuals there are youths they use uh, social media for productive activities not for wasting their time rather they are investing their time so we are in a digital economy with digitalization process till there is a gap in assessing using the technology we call it as digital divide and even ensuring cyber equality cyber equality in the sense you know there are groups those who don't have awareness access to information communication technology and others those who have access to information communication technology there is a two groups even today in this this the disparity between these groups 
imbalances among these two groups should be narrowed down. That can ensure intergenerational equity. For example, my grandparents, they don't have any idea about uh, Facebook, WhatsApp, and Twitter and the like. But going to this generation and generations, you know, awareness, they are being given training, orientation for our, for my grandfather, he can operate. So once they understand the technology, they can operate just like introduction of computer. So overcoming digital divide and increasing access and usage of IT, ICT for all citizens is the need of the hour. I think the, the government has been working on this idea and import export activities across group. As we all know that due to this COVID-19, the trade channels are not in event. So different sectors of the countries and the businesses were at the peak, but now we couldn't be able to find market for some of the commodities and there are especially in cotton cotton sectors in in in, in, in tamil nadu as well as in india now they are facing big problem even the same the same thing happening you know ethiopia is well known for coffee coffee arabica is the number one in the world ethiopia is well known for exporting coffee to throughout the world but now they have a problem of finding market thousands and thousands of tons of coffee have been go down and stored in warehouses that we, we could see, but we need to find a proper market access. So the experiences of global countries, almost all countries of the world realized that, you know, they had been facing, they had been facing the effects of post COVID-19 and the effects are being still uh, in, uh, implemented in their policies to reduce the effects. There are the self reliance is the strategy that government of India has been following, you know, our father of nation, Mahatma Gandhi has uh, well known for his, you know, Sudesi economy. It is about Vili Suraj and uh, uh, our, the first prime minister of India, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru. He has been advocating mixed economy with focusing on self-dependent and also interested to involve private sectors with high control of, you know, this uh, government of India's. and. Government organizations fixed the margin of production in those days. So our forum, former Prime Minister, Madam Indira Gandhi G, she also brought changes in the mixed economy, food cereals, production, security, technological development has got intensified during her period. So why I'm just telling you the historical scenario of this economy, but we have to look back and look at the leaders and their contributions to grow our economy in a self-reliant way. That is the need of the hour. That is the current government is also focusing on the same idea. Industry is having the provider, especially after made up, you know, this Madam Magadma, you know, Madam Indira Gandhi. You know, Magadma Gandhi has started about village Swaraj, and Jawaharlal Nehru has been giving focusing on mixed economy. Madam Indira Gandhi has started, you know, focusing on food production, cereals production, security sector, technology and development has got intensified in India. So industries have been given to the private sector. So very first time, the industrial uh, privatization was started uh, you know, with the initiation of uh, Madam Indira Gandhi. Aftermath of global oil crisis of 1970s, she established crude oil processing companies in India. She allotted funds for establishment of scientific research laboratories, one of the marvelous achievements of her period. She believed that India will be self-sufficient country through innovation, research, and development activities. So both Negru's and Indra's models was not efficient, not efficient, owing to lack of competition and public support was very much debated. And then, for instance, to get the products, the customers waited for years. Uh, I think if you look back uh, more than before 30, 40, before 30 years, like Bajaj MIT, if you want to purchase this uh, Bajaj MIT two-wheeler, people had been waiting for about more than two years. And Raju Handi enhanced the privatization sectors by promoting our Tata, Reliance, Bajaj, Mahindra, become strong in our market. For information, friends, our Bajaj three-wheeler and TVS three-wheelers are one of the basic breadwinners of most of the Ethiopians here. So they use as a, a very survival mechanism. The entire lifestyle is depend on operating you know, the three-wheeler. They call it as even the name of the auto, what you are calling here is they are known as Bajaj. If you come to Ethiopia, if you want to hire a, a three-wheeler, uh, auto, the auto means Mr. in their language. So if you want to hire a uh, auto, you have to call Bajaj. Even the books, 
Even the textbooks I have seen, the textbooks they have written Bajaj, like our Xerox. So instead of photocopy, we used to always say Xerox. The same thing there, it has been happening there. In general, during Nehru period, agriculture was promoted. Indira Gandhi's period, service sector was promoted. Rajiv Gandhi's period, industries were promoted. So you, for your information, you know, during 10 years, 1980 to 1990, India had eight financial ministers, especially from 1985 to 19, about five financial ministers. So in the 1991, uh, the former uh, Prime Minister of India, then the, the Finance Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, has announced the globalization process along with its, uh, its twin sisters, privatization and liberalization. Right from 1991 till date, so the economic mood from the growth rate of 3.7 to 8.0, but, but, but poverty is still there, inequality is still there, and unemployment is uh, skyrocketing. Especially graduated youth unemployment is skyrocketing. In the same manner, like other developing countries, India has announced different economic stimulus packages, which is five pillars economy, infrastructure, technology driven system, demography, and demand, and the like. So, how this privatization is linked with our package? Now we are living in a world which is highly interconnected. It is highly known for exchange of uh, knowledge, exchange of uh, science and technology, exchange of capital, investment, and so on. Even during you know, if you could see our history, during Chola period, we had a trade commerce up to Rome. Even we had been using silk routes of China those days. Before 40 years, we had a lot of different uh, car and automobile companies for, for technology. You know, we had a collaboration with Ford and Mahindra, Ford with Mahindra, Suzuki with TBS, Honda with Hero, Kawasaki with Bajaj and the like. So now they have been separate. Now we are exporting to different parts of the world, including Africa. Our, as I told you before, our two wheelers are the breadwinners for many family in Ethiopia as well. How two wheelers? They are using two wheelers as a taxi. So now many companies are started leaving from China at this juncture. It's a great opportunity for India to tap the opportunities. So with regards to weapons, India has spent about 60,000 crore rupees per year for purchase, which is very much next to the Saudi Arabia. Russia has already privatized this sector to the private companies. This is the advantage is GDP growth, income generation, and employment opportunity. So hence, in this way also, they can you know just look for uh, ensuring employment opportunities for our youths and then other population of the country. Unleasing opportunity for social justice. You know, here, um, what are the ways in which we can tap the opportunity to ensure social justice? Number one, as to the literatures, as uh, to many scholars, number one is about securing food. What type of security? It is filling the stomach. It is not filling the stomach. It is about ensuring, ensuring nutrition access, ensuring uh, access to food, access to nutrition, access to what they call, and availability access is very important. When you talk about food security, availability food and access to food. And that too, not filling the stomach, it is about with nutrition and health and hygiene. Uh, as to me, I think our uh, Nobel laureate, Amartya Sen, he said that it is about capability, ensuring capability. It is all about being and doing, being able to live long, being able to healthy, being able to take part in community affairs, being able to you know, express and being able to uh, have education, being able to be mobile, but but friends, how many of them are doing? That is the reality. This is there comes the problem of ensuring justice. When we say justice, there are three things comes. Number one, uh, especially distributed justice. If you want to have a public sector delivery, if you want to do something, when you go for distributive justice, there comes three things. Who gets what? Who gets more and who gets less? If everybody gets the same, then there is a fairness, equity, fairness, and there is a distributive justice. But, but you know, this is what the problem. Being able to access primary education and how many of them are doing, that is the reality that we have to look into. And being able to live long and how many of our generation are li living long? And having 
uh, access to being able to access portable drinking water how many of them are doing this is what the you know problem we have been facing now and sanitation and personal personal as well as community sanitation this is also very important and to ensure social justice and network for equitable and inclusive development of course you know connecting the cities and towns smart smart villages smart towns and small cities and it can enable uh, it can promote transparency accountability responsiveness and even a rule of law can also be promoted by using this you know inclusive uh, development and technological innovation of course we are using uh, drones for uh, fertilizers and pesticides and even uh, thanks to technology we are using our classroom from classroom to zoom and other portals we have been google meet and then google uh, whiteboard and then and the like and this is what uh, we have been got an opportunity for this you know to ensure social justice and bridging the digital divide and ensuring cyber equality as i told you and ensuring uh, securing livelihood of marginalized laborers of course you know if you see there are sectors which are known as informal sectors why they are informal sectors because they hide from their inland revenue authorities they don't report to the tax authorities rather they have been you know what part of of course they are the very important very vital part of the economy but they are not visible to the you know others especially for tax authorities like for example street vendors rural artisans agricultural workers and other informal sectors these are the very vibrant very active sectors they are also part of the economy they are known for production process but they don't you know get what they produce so even uh, daily wage workers migrant workers so this the livelihood of them should be you know addressed and agriculture sector uh, of course market supply market information market access and supply chain for example value chain of mango mango starting from mango the producer of mango to the end user the person who produces the mango the mango he may get mango producer he may get for one piece of mango for about you know uh, 10 rupees but the person who is selling juice he may get 100 100 rupees so if you could see the see the change so we need to have value addition so value chain should be properly managed and tourism sector so now i have been witnessing a lot of tourists are flowing to india uh, and other parts of the world for medical religious as well as eco tourism and yeah, there are travelers especially for india which, you know from africa most of them are traveling to chennai for chennai cancer care centers and religious institutions for, as a tourist right and my friends now let me highlight some of the challenges for ensuring this is social justice it's not a, a very simple task of course there are a lot of challenges we have been uh, uh, facing number one unclear disaster risk management phases if there is a problem of disaster we don't have a clear you know faces to tackle that issues and existing deep rooted socio economic inequalities our you know system our both social system and uh, economic system and even political system it is uh, stereotyped it is stereotyped there is no way to uh, break that one and there are uh, struggles people are having uh, facing struggles to break having a break even point and then change the cycle and the like so now it has become what you call a vicious circle, vicious circle of you know equal inequality, vicious circle of poverty, vicious circle of you know, unemployment, like and government governance challenges. So governance is all about three things: content, process, and deliverables. So what it carries for the people, you know, and when it comes for implementation process, there is a gap. So the policy makers they make policy in a very a novel as well as very uh, innovative and having a transformative potential to bring a lot of changes for the society but when it comes for implementation there is a gap so there is a point of visioning and then implementation there is a problem there is a challenge and then ensuring uh, quality standard or even for implement after implementation we don't have a proper you know, evaluative mechanisms to know the impact impact of those efforts 
So that means there is a lack of clear uh, follow up of this in entire network of this governance system. So governance is all about content, process, and deliverables. So the subject matter for which the governance is being taken or decision has been made, and how it has been implemented, and how it has been you know affected. But in most cases, especially you know if you could see the countries like Ethiopia, there is no such governance. They are always known for conduct trainings, workshop for good governance. Even I myself have delivered a lot of you know trainings on good governance, leadership, and the moral and discipline ethics of a leader and the like. So this is the need of the hour an impact of globalization of course there are a lot of impacts among these social impact political impact uh, even uh, cultural impact which one is more important what could be the effects in terms of economic effects we know that uh, countries are not free from different global uh, factors as well as even the same country we are supposed to receive global you know instructions to start a small business even the informal sectors are not free from the global economic impacts even political impacts as such we are uh, the countries are being monopolized are dominated by as such there is a world system world government so there are monopoly governments they used to have control over other countries so in this sense uh, there is a lack of you know equity and then justice and for those countries if they want to stand against those dominant countries or hegemonical countries there are being you know uh, sanctions in terms of cutting foreign aid you know you know uh, what happened uh, recent very recent in ethiopia ethiopia had a war same country one region was fighting with the whole country and during that time uh, the us government has stopped their you know funds us now there is no funding but they are very happy that india was helping them in the UN Security Council, India was standing with the uh, Ethiopian government. They are voted. They are voted for uh, for Ethiopia. That's what uh, the good point they have been still remembering. And social globalization, of course, it has a lot of benefits. At the same time, it has both benefits, cons and cons. Pros and cons are there. Cultural globalization, where we are going now. Cultural homogenization, enculturation cultural assimilation and now we are got a single culture like for example coca colonization mcdonaldism fordism and the like so uh, having a single cultural culture so there is no such uh, no there is it, i'll make it clear that there's a domination now the just this is my last slide in this slide now let us see some of the what you call uh, unleashing opportunities for social justice or how to overcome the barriers i just you know uh, try to come up with some of the strategies. Number one is always about equilibrium with the changes in the ecology. So if there is a climatic change, if there is a climatic variability, so how to mitigate that ch challenges? So we need to uh, plan, come up with a plan or strategy that can reduce the intensity. For example, if there is a failure of monsoon, if there is a starvation, hunger, famine, what would be the early warning mechanism we have the, for the countries? and changes in the lifestyle of course there are a lot of attractions now due to globalization and now culture has been you know being fully you know dominated by global culture especially western culture western music western way of life has been a part of our citizens and that need to be taken into account so changes in the lifestyle has to be brought in line with the need of the hour and that too with the significant impact on the life, uh, lifestyle should be based on their own you know preferences and without missing the indigenous indigenous uh, spirit of life and you know of course the western way of life something is best we can cope up but not copying is not always not acceptable rethinking clients shaping education reshaping education and training of course you know to ensure social justice we have to think about the the market. What is available? What kind of job opportunities are and existing for our you know, students? And based on that, we have to educate and impart training. So learning something and doing something is not acceptable. And enterprises, of course, startups. Startups, startups uh, are very important that can generate income 
And this, uh, at this scenario, we are living in a world where there is a revolution in information communication technology. In that revolution, we have got a very important you know, global internet expansion. So we have to use this opportunity for uh, bringing productivity and change. And technology and science, of course, it has much to do in creating social justice. Why? Because technology is one of the factors that can promote accountability and rule of law promoting research and development above all you know for all these things we are supposed to work more and more on academic research as well as active uh, action research and then you know field-based researchers need to be you know promoted so this is all about my presentation thank you one and all thank you so much thank you sir uh, we are very much grateful to both Professor uh, Sujit Kumar Paul, sir, and also uh, Professor Sivakumar, sir, for your wonderful presentation and provoking thought to enable the social justice towards on human sustainable human development on the basis of G2G, that is, grassroots to globalization. As Mahatma Gandhi ji uh, quoted that, the first non-violence, uh, the first condition for non-violence is justice all around in every department of life. Likewise, so uh, both professor have said that and uh, given presentation in this regard. So now the stage is open for the clar clarification, if anything, any uh, from our present presenters. I just want to congratulate uh, both the uh, speakers, uh, um, especially, um, um, you know, uh, Dr. Sujit and also Dr. Sivakumar. They have really made it. This day is a very important day for us. At the same time, how all these aspects can be enumerated and included as rightly said by Silvakumar, that inclusivism, how exclusivism can be certain things we have to eliminate, certain things we have to include, is more important in order to make uh, the social justice as a very important and useful uh, for the younger generations uh, by using the uh, technology, information, uh, communication technology. So thank you very much for both of you. And I also welcome our participants to raise a few questions. If not, we'll proceed further. Thank you. Very kind of you, Sivakumar and Sudhish ji. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Dear participant, is there any questions or clarification? Please, Lakshman and sir. If anyone would like to raise questions, please introduce yourself and then uh, please raise the question. Uh, a small observation. Um, uh, there will be a formal vote of thanks. However, uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor Shudish Kumar Paul and uh, Siva Kumar. It's the coincidence is that both Sri Dikedan experiment and Gandhi Gram experiment stands and holds good in accomplishing the social justice. In such a way, it's a coincidence that uh, Dr. Uh, Sujit Kumar Paul as highlighted the Tagore's experiment and Tagore's view. And uh, Siva Kumar, though he has not explicitly said it is a Gandhigram experiment or Gandhigram philosophy, whatever he has been speaking, uh, the spirit of those letters are all, it is an, more of an experiential learning. Whatever he has learned in Gandhigram soil and his experience in uh, 
uh, African environment uh, enabled him to deliver such a wonderful thing. And both the lectures is a model for how this kind of a lecture should be on these days. Thank you very much. We we hope that uh, there is no uh, question raised, uh, so that uh, shall we uh, conclude the session with what up thanks. Shall we proceed? Yes, if there is no questions, I think we can proceed. Yeah, thank you, sir. No uh, now it's a number of people are thanking are thanking the uh, uh, speakers by sending the messages. I think that also is happening. Yes, thank you. Uh, it is time to propose the vote of thanks to this webinar. Uh, in order to wrap up the session, uh, may I request Dr. S. S. Vijayanjali, a director in charge, Center for Women's Studies, GRA, to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you, uh, Ramesh. Am I audible? Madam, yes, yes. madam, please. Good evening, one and all. I deem it a great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks on this memorable occasion. Uh, let me first uh, of all start by giving glory to the Almighty God for making today's special lecture a resounding success. And first and foremost, I'd like to thank our Vice Chancellor, Dr. Gurmit Singh, uh, for his uh, great support. And uh, we are grateful to our Registrar, Dr. B.P. Ashokuma, sir, for his words of encouragement. I thank him for his interest and continued support, who, despite his busy schedule, has found time to grace this occasion through his address. As you said, sir, every occasion can be a memorable one and can be cherished if you are working together. Yes, sir, we are at it. Thank you, sir. I thank our special guest, Dr. Sujit Kumar Paul, Professor in Lifelong Learning from Vishwabharti University, West Bengal. You, you have brought a wonderful clips of rural reconstruction experiment in Sriniketan, the site of Vishwabharati in between Shantiniketan and Sriniketan, and portrayed the idea of Gurudev Ramitranath Tagore, a pioneering person in rural reconstruction. And still, you are all following and working on the ideas of Gurudev Tagore. And here, I'm very happy to state that our is working in the same way to build the villages and to help the rural populace by following the ideology of our founders, Dr. G. Ramachandran Mama and Dr. T. S. Soundra Mama, the two disciples of our father of uh, nation, Mahatma Gandhiji. And I also express my heartfelt thanks to Dr. Shivakuma, as Associate Professor, School of Governance and Developmental Studies, College of Law and Governance, Havasa University a special alumni for his thought-provoking presentation. Sir, as you said, one day our grandchildren will see poverty in the world in all the respect so that our future generations will live a very happy life. Thank you, sir. And I am very happy to thank our Professor Dr. Raja, sir, for his stewardship support, vision, and commitment in conducting the programs and for us <coughs> thought-provoking welcome address. Thank you, sir. And I also thank Dr. Kalpana Kaushik, Madam, Director, Indian Adult Association, and uh, Professor Dr. Vengatravi, sir, Department of Lifelong Learning, Gandhigram Rural Institute, for their continuous and valuable support. Thank you, madam, and thank you, sir. My heartfelt thanks to the heads of the various departments and the faculties, um, guest faculties, Dr. Ramesh, Dr. Nana Saranya from Right Long Learning and Dr. Yeshwari from Center for Women's Studies for their support. And I owe special gratitude to uh, Mr. Venkatesh and Nirmal for the technical support who have worked hard to ensure that this occasion becomes a memorable success. I thank all the distinguished invitees present here accepting our invitation. <clears throat> the main goal of commemorating this day is to raise a voice against social injustice and to bring various communities together. The day also raises awareness to eliminate poverty, 
gender, physical discrimination, illiteracy, and religious discrimination, and so on. And all our speakers of the special lecture said they will work and the value, the need to uphold social justice for the development of our nation and a world full of peace. Once again, I thank you all for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vijayangli, madam. It was so good. And I take this opportunity to thank every one of you, especially the uh, organizing committee, a uh, number of persons who are in the organizing committee, along with the Center for uh, Women's Studies and the Department of Lifelong Learning and the Indian Adult Education Association. All of us, it was possible for us to come together and to make this event as a very, very memorable one. And there are many scholars and students, they have mostly benefited the experiment of Tagore as well as the experiment of Ethiopia. And uh, I'm really sure that this day was very useful for every one of us. And it would be in the uh, future endeavor also, we'll be able to come together and work and organize such meetings in the future. Thank you very much for all of you, especially Dr. Jnana Saranya, Dr. Ramesh, Dr. Uh, uh, Venkat Ravi, and Dr. Kalpana Kausik, everyone who are really uh, backing and also front forward, looking uh, and taking care of everything in a meticulous way. Thank you very much for all. Bye. Yeah, piece of information to the participant. Um, there is a in chat box. There is a link uh, for uh, e-certificate. If anyone interested, please give feedback and get your certificate. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shwetma. We'll meet sometimes. Thank you so much, sir. Thank yeah. you, everybody. Thank Very you kind so of you. Thank you. Having accepted our invitations. Thank you so much. And it was so nice. It's a pleasure. Thank you, sir. And I really, I really enjoyed. It's all your mentoring, sir. It's all about your mentoring, your guidance. Thank you so much, yeah. sir. I always respect you, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to God. Thank you, sir. Sudhirsi, as I saw, it was so good. Yeah. And. It was possible for you to, you could come and, uh, and you were, most of the were stand, scholars and students also have joined. Yeah, yeah. I and uh, my, my scholars also met you in Delhi. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and please convey nice yeah. my love to them, everyone, my greetings to them. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll meet. Well, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. In, in due course, we'll meet. Chaudhary ji, namaskar. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good thank program. You. Congratulations. <laughs> This is our okay, joint you. effort. We have to congratulate each other. Joint effort. Yes. True. <laughs>